we present an ISO MPM, a new approach for animating dynamic and isotropic fracture using continuum damage mechanics. An ISO MPM is composed of three key elements. The first is a geometric approach to modeling damage, paired with structural tensors to encode material directionality. The second is a novel QR decomposition-based anisotropic constitutive model that is robust to extreme topological changes. Third, we pair these approaches by using the damage to allow for material separation. We additionally present a new Galerkin weak form discretization that enables embedded directional inextensibility. This allows for the simulation of extremely stiff materials using larger than usual time steps while avoiding the locking problem. We start with an overview of how we represent material cracks. In material space, discontinuity is modeled with a field of damage variables that evolve over time. MPM transfers damage to the grid and uses our discretized anisotropic damage evolution equation to update damage. In world space, the evolved damage variables weaken the material's elastic response to allow for material separation. An ISO MPM uses the traditional MPM pipeline for solving momentum and updating velocity. However, an ISO MPM utilizes a staggered integration scheme and is comprised of two data pipelines, one for momentum and one for damage. Note that our damaged pipeline uses the current particle deformation gradients to update damage, and then the damage is used to update grid velocity through the constitutive coupling. We also present a method for evolving damage using implicit time integration using a similar data flow. Finally, note that inextensibility is implemented as a post-process on updated grid velocity. To demonstrate the efficacy of pairing our methods together, we present four tube poles. The top left tube is pulled with both anisotropic damage and anisotropic elasticity to demonstrate the successful pairing of our two methods together. Alternatively, a fully isotropic tube fails to produce this guided fracture. Additionally, using only one or the other also fails to produce the desired fracture. Here, we push a ball through a variety of differently structured thin membranes, each producing a guided crack path unique to the underlying fiber structure. Here, we show that the material resistance to damage can be controlled with the critical stress, and that the crack propagation speed can be controlled with the mobility constant, eta. Next, we use a very small eta value to demonstrate that implicit damage is capable of producing very fast cracks, while explicit damage explodes. Now to discuss our constitutive model and how it interacts with damage. Here, we animate the effect that damage has on our constitutive model. As damage increases, the overall elastic response decreases. Next, we scale only the primary fiber direction to model a transversely isotropic material. Notice the asymmetric scaling on the surface. Finally, we scale both the primary and secondary fiber directions to model an orthotropic material. Notice the symmetry of the surface scaling. We stretch three tubes using isotropic, transversely isotropic, and orthotropic elasticity to demonstrate how the cross sections differ during simulation. Notice how the strength and directions keep their shape. We also show how fiber scaling affects the sharpness of the crack path, as well as how Young's modulus also directly influences the material resistance to fracture. Next, we show some demos related to our inextensibility. We show a variety of hanging tori of increasing density to demonstrate that anisotropic elasticity is not enough to carry the heavier tori, while inextensibility keeps the tori almost completely in place. Next, we demonstrate the classic locking effect that occurs for anisotropic elasticity if the fibers are slightly perturbed. Note that this shows inextensibility to be locking free. Now we'll show some results. Here we show successful compressive fracture for an isotropic tube. This time the tube is anisotropic and fractures along its vertical fibers. Next, we want to simulate the layered peeling characteristics of the famous Donpo pork belly, but modeling this with isotropy fails to capture this effect. Here we show that transverse isotropy is still not enough, but instead peels away just a strip. Finally, we use orthotropy to model the desired layered peeling of this homemade pork belly. And here we show the damage, with blue being healthy material and red being damaged material. Here we skin a fish that has flow generated fibers, revealing the topologically conforming fiber pattern. Next, we pull apart a plastic toy heart using von Mises plasticity to demonstrate the natural support for plasticity within an ISO MPM. Now, we peel apart a cheese stick to show off the strong stringy fibers intrinsic to mozzarella cheese. Next, we demonstrate a real world example. We capture three different types of bone fracture. Twisting produces a spiral fracture, pulling causes a transverse fracture, and bending creates an oblique fracture. 
Next, we pull apart an orange slice to reveal the juicy radial fracture caused by the fruit's underlying structure. And here, we visualize the evolving damage. Next, we constrain an evil toy armadillo with anisotropically elastic ropes and pierce the toy with a lance to split it in two using anisotropic damage and flow fibers. This time, the armadillo has isotropic damage, showing that the clean split requires anisotropy. Finally, we change the ropes to be inextensible rather than anisotropically elastic to demonstrate that inextensibility successfully pairs with anisotropic damage just as well. Finally, we want to simulate tearing some raw meat, but isotropic damage is not sufficient to model this. When we add anisotropic damage to the meat, we reveal the intricate tearing along the muscle fibers. And here, we visualize the evolving damage. Thanks for watching!